Welcome to Jamaica. So I'm gonna be spending the next few days here in Montego Bay and Daz here is gonna show me around. Daz is from Montego Bay Foodie Tours and you're gonna show me a lot of good food around here. Exactly, a lot of local stuff. Let's do it. They have some of these fruits naturally around the back there. They got the ackee tree. Mm -hmm. They got these berry trees around there. Mm -hmm. All right, so they would just um, bring it. Otherwise known as Sacodilla in North America. Mm. Wow. It tastes very sugary. Like, like, yeah, it tastes like natural sugar. Yeah, kind of almost like a, a pear consistency, mm -hmm. the texture. Very soft. Mm. It's almost cinnamony too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, you mm. can even wash the skin, wash the outside and eat the whole thing. Oh, okay. The skin. It kind of looks like a... Like a kiwi, right? Yeah. This is the guinea. So you're just going to use your teeth. You could use your finger too, but you normally just use your teeth. Okay. Eh? Crack it open. You don't need to put too much pressure on it. You just squeeze it up. Mm. Oh, it pops, huh? Pops, right. Mm. Mm. That's a big pit. Oh, it's really tart. Mm -hmm. That's good though. The flesh is very soft. Yeah. They make the almonds directly from this. Yeah, so you, you crack it open. Mm. You, you bind it together with like brown sugar. Mm -hmm. you see, it's like a sweet. Mm. So this is like toasted almonds. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really good. Mm. It's it gingery is. too, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you put a little ginger in your mm. brown sugar. Fresh Jamaican pineapple. Wow. Pineapple the way they should taste. So juicy and sweet. So after getting some fruit, we are here at Juicy Patties. This is one of the biggest patty shops in Jamaica. And it's started by a Jamaican Chinese guy. Yes, Juk Chen. Juk Chen. Yes, the other one was his grandson. Juk, Juk Chen. Yeah. All right, let's try it out. Got two patties. One is the cheese and beef. One is just the beef. That's not gonna eat with this with me because too, too many patties you said already for you? What that tells me is that you can eat it on its own and what people usually do is you keep it in the bag, you don't break it apart like I just did. I just kind of wanted to you know, showcase what's inside but usually you keep it in a bag because it is really crumbly and just eat it and the crumbs just fall inside. This is a cocoa bread. So what a lot of people do is put the patty inside the cocoa bread and eat it like a sandwich like that. So I wanted just to try the patty on its own. Burning hot, by the way. First bite of authentic Jamaican food. The patty is just the crumbliest, incredibly flaky and toasty. Inside, the beef and gravy. So much heat and such a great beefy flavor. It's like the most ultimate, ultimate beefy hot pocket. The pastries are wrong. It's a work of food art. Everything is so tasty and spicy. Then just the beef and cheese patty. I think I like it better. An awesome beef patty with just a ton of oozy cheese. All right, I ate half of each. Now let's put it inside the bread. So the bread itself, wow, look how pillowy this thing is. It's nice and toasty on the outside. Inside, look at this. It's like a rectangular edible trampoline. As soon as you open that up, you can smell that delicious sweetness. Put my patty inside, have beef and cheese, put them to bed, and this is a Jamaican patty sandwich with two different flavors of patties inside. So each patty is about two US dollars. The cocoa bread is one dollar. So put this all together. This is a three dollar Jamaican patty sandwich. This actually smells Smells like really, really good bread. That is a great way to eat a Jamaican patty. The same awesome flakiness, and that mind-blowing seasoning and spices, all inside the most pillowy, fluffy, airy, buttery cocoa bread. This is a ginormous meal. This is a great start to my Jamaican food tour. Also got this mellow drink, and it's a cherry pineapple drink. Mmm. 
Oh, this is awesome. It's like the most fragrant fruit punch. That goes great with my Jamaican patty sandwich. These are the honey banana. Honey banana. Stopping on another food stand because they got different fruits on the first one. Honey banana. Way stronger banana flavor than any other banana I've ever had. Mm. Green gauge. Green the gauge mango. Green gauge. Yeah. All you gotta do is just bite the skin. Peel it with the teeth. You do like a quarter of it. Mm -hmm. And just bite down. I think I've ever peeled mango in my teeth before, but even as I'm peeling, getting a little taste of this, this is gonna be really, really good. Mm. Oh my God. It was one of the best mangoes I've ever had in my life. This thing is so, so sweet and so much juice. This is just deliciously intense. Mm. That one really nice. It's so nice. <laughs> This is even better. Yes, man. There's no fiber in this. Vibrated, but not much. Not much, no. There's so much juice. This is almost custardy. Hmm. Really don't find mangoes like this in the grocery stores in the US. I haven't chewed sugar cane like this since I was a kid. So oh, good. Next up, we're grabbing some cow foot and some traditional Jamaican curry goat. It's a really interesting restaurant that serves. I think the menu changes all the time too, but look outside when you get to eat, you go to the back, tables, seats, made out of these uh, shipping crates and everything is cooked in the back as well so never had a cow's foot before curry goat is a very popular jamaican cuisine and everything here like i said is barbecued in the backyard the goat is drenched in curry also on the side you get some cucumbers rice and beans tomatoes mm. that is off the hook these are tender pieces of goat also about 10 seconds after the goat goes into your mouth that's when you start to feel that nice slow burn curry everything as you chew releases the different spices and herbs so your mouth is just filled with this spicy flavorful umami filled happiness that's in every single piece of this goat there's so much curry sauce which is great because i really want that thing to just drench my rice some rice and beans some goat there's some mushy potatoes in here as well The whole meal, the flavor, the ingredients, everything just being able to sit right out back. It's so good. Brian's the owner of this place. He didn't want to be on camera, but this is like some outstanding go. Off the wall, tender and flavorful. Zero gaminess whatsoever. I know I haven't had curry gold often. This is the best. I mean, by far. My mouth is on fire in all the best way possible right now. Now for the cow foot. Look at this. I'm actually super excited to eat any kind of feet or hooves because I love pig's feet. And when I was in Pakistan, I had really delicious gold hooves. But a beef foot, look at this. It's so gelatinous -y. And you can tell already how tender it is. This thing's just falling apart. I have a little plastic fork and it's just breaking all that nice gelatinous see meat off mm. oh that's really good i mean this is a sticky yummy bite what i love about this just like a pig's foot there's so many little bones in here that you can kind of just break apart and suck on and there's little crevices where you find some tendon some cartilage mm. and every bite your mouth it just feels like you put on a layer of sticky chapstick. And this thing, the sauce is just filled with that deep, rich umami flavor. These are very different dishes. The curry goat, really spicy, tons of spices, such a light your tongue fire kind of flavor. The beef foot is rich, again, very gelatinous. Both of these dishes, extremely rustic, robust flavors. 
I mean, both of these just gives us such strong comfort food vibes. This is an area where a lot of foreign companies set up a shop. So you get a lot of daily workers and they come to these that basically look like little houses and they come and grab this. And this is literally called box food. They come and grab for lunch or dinner. I mean, why wouldn't they? Absolutely delicious. That took me to the outskirts of Montego Bay to the seafood stand that serves up some of the most beautiful seafood I have ever laid my eyes on. And it's right on the beach. As I'm about to eat right now, I'm looking out to where they're cooking everything. And beyond that, it's just a beautiful ocean. So what a setting for a seafood restaurant. Everything they cook here, looks amazing so first thing you do when you get here is you go with them into a freezer where they store all their daily catches and you pick out your fish your shellfish like lobster crab you can pick out your octopus they weigh it for you so you know exactly what you're paying for and then you can choose for it to be cooked in one of many 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 different ways so for example i got a grill red snapper they recommended a pair of fish and the specialty here is steamed fish so the fish is stuffed full of ingredients like okra carrots, chilies, butter and seasoning is added. It's wrapped up, then it's tucked, snuggled in into a foil bag. Goes on the wood charcoal grill for 20 minutes to be steamed. And out comes this beautiful fish dish. And inside they add what they call water crackers, which soaks up all that juice and butter. And the fish, look at how it's flaking. This thing is so tender and gorgeous. And it smells ridiculous. everything you love about fish and about flavor, all wrapped in a foil bag. Oh my gosh. I've never had pear fish before. It's very mild and flaky. And after it's been steamed for 20 minutes, just so tender. And the flavors from the vegetable and the seasoning definitely steep into the fish. But the seasoning doesn't really overwhelm that clean fish flavor. I'm gonna try one of these water crackers. I don't know if I had like that before. An airy, crunchy cracker after being soaked and steamed. Essentially, this buttery fish sauna. It's moist, it's soaked up all that great seasoning and flavor. It's buttery. It's got that delicious, mild seafood flavor. You taste the heat. I almost like the water crackers more than the fish. It's got that nice al dente texture, so it's got a good chew to it. But at the same time, it's soaked up all that great juice. So it's juicy, it's chewy. It's genius. When you get your fish, they ask you what you want to eat it with. I chose bami. Fish and bami is a very common dish here. Some some sort of fried bread. So I'm gonna dunk it in my buttery fish juice. It's a little sweet. And the texture is kind of like fried mochi. This is really, really good. This other fish, the red snapper, was done Esco Beach style. So this way of cooking is spinach influenced. It's basically a fried fish. When you fry the outside, that delightful juice of the fish is just trapped under the skin. There's stir fried onions and also is cooked with scotch bonnet peppers, a very popular pepper here in Jamaica. I actually saw people buying it in bags to take home. You remove the seeds, the outside is still nice and spicy. It's the greatest way to eat fish. I thought that steamed fish was good. This is crazy. First of all, that fish is just as juicy as I thought. The outside's got a slight subtle crunch in that onion and peppers. Holy cow, that combo is vinegary. It's a little smoky. Just a load of heat to balance out the fried fish. Wow, what a combo. The onions are vinegary. All the heat from the peppers definitely transfer to the onions as well. Blazingly spicy. It's not made in a way where it's supposed to punish you or purposely make you cry a little bit. It just goes beautifully with the fish. Also, I got two different types of lobster. This is their butter garlic lobster. Look at all the garlic that's on this lobster. Holy moly. They grill it, it's just drenched in butter garlic sauce. And this is the Caribbean lobster. So it's gonna be less sweet than the typical main lobster. Take the tail, dunk it into the butter garlic sauce.
you need that. This lobster is a little savory. It's still got a hint of sweetness. I mean, the lobster on its own is delicious enough, but the buttered garlic sauce just brought it home. I mean, extreme garlicky, extreme buttery. Who doesn't love something like that? Getting all up in your lobster's business. Check this out. This is Jamaica, after all. They made me a jerk lobster. This thing is a thing of beauty. Look at this. So juicy. When I took out the lobster tail, there's still little bits of juice on the shell. I'm just gonna drip that back onto the meat itself. And this thing smells like a dream. Savory with a hint of sweetness this time. A little kick because it's a jerk. It just enhances that clean, subtly sweet flavor of the lobster. The whole thing is so smoky. This is like living a seafood dream right now. I'll tell you what though, as much as I love the lobster, it's delicious. The fish is something else here. One bite, you can taste how fresh it is. Not one element is out of place or misused or too much. It's just perfect. Definitely get the lobster. Lobster is phenomenal. But don't leave without trying the fish, especially the Right. All right, Dennis. Thanks all for right. an amazing food day. No problem. That was awesome, man. Right. If you guys want to check Dennis out, I'll put all his information, his Instagram, his company, everything down in the description box below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.